Hey guys, welcome to the summary video on chapter one. Okay, now just a quick recap on measurements. Uh, okay, what is physics? We've covered this before. Physics can be classified to these main four main categories: general physics involving motion, thermal physics involving heat, um, waves uh, involving light and sound mainly, and um, for electricity and magnetism, that will be the final part of physics. Okay. Okay, so looking at physical quantities and units, okay, it's important. Just need you to underline and highlight these parts here. Okay, 4.5 meters. When we look at this road sign here, the number 4.5 represents the magnitude, the number me the symbol meter represents the unit. So a physical quantity consists of both a magnitude and a unit. The meaning for magnitude simply means value. So to write that down, that's about it. Okay, so how many base quantities do we have? Okay, we've got seven base quantities. Seven, and these are the sevens. Um, do write in this symbol also for the seven. Uh, for example, length stands for small letter L, mass stands for small letter M, and so on. Okay, so out of these seven base quantities, we can derive all other derived quantities we'll use at least one of these seven base units. For example, speed will use length and time, meters per second, right? And uh, probably uh, area will just use two times the length, which is length times length. So that's area, okay, and so on. Okay, so derived quantities, like what we mentioned, they are all derived from the seven bases, either all or just a couple of them, okay? So these are some more examples of uh, derived units, like area, volume, and speed. Okay, so why do we need SI units? Okay, main reason is because uh, we actually need to put these units into calculation. So we need a fixed uh, unit. For example, uh, the kilogram is the most uh, commonly used uh, mass unit. So we actually use a kilogram instead of a gram. And for length, we usually talk in terms of meters, so we actually use the meter instead of centimeters. Okay, so I just go back to the reason earlier I mentioned. We actually use, uh, selected these units to become the SI unit, the meter instead of centimeter or millimeter, the kilogram instead of the ton or the, or the, or the uh, gram. Okay, we use this because of two main reasons okay these units particular units here are the most commonly used around the world today okay in our everyday life and the second reason is that we need to have a standard unit uh, so that we can uh, when we put it into our equations uh, it will always be uh, we are always measuring the same uh, quantity or the same value okay so i hope that makes sense huh? all right so Coming to prefixes, okay, prefixes, um, prefixes over here, uh, I think we went through in one of the pre my previous videos on how we actually got this story here to remember, help you remember, okay, it's basically the gigantic monkey's kick meets my nasty punch, okay, try to write this down, copy this down into your textbook so that you can remember that. Okay, if you can see here, this is a pattern of 36912 for the gigantic monkey. And for you, meeting your nasty punch will be minus 3, minus 6, minus 9, minus 12 also. Okay, and in the middle, we'll give you a detention class for fighting, right? Yeah. Okay, check out my previous video uh, if you need um, some more recap on this particular story over here. If this doesn't really make sense to you, you know, just check out the previous video. Okay, then after that, we will go through, oh, this is just a summary of what we've covered so far. Physical quantity consists of a magnitude and a unit. SI units, uh, these are the base quantities and prefixes are all the table we just covered. Okay, now measurement of length. SI unit for length we covered before is the meter, the meter rule. Okay, these are some common uh, everyday objects. Okay, the uh, Atom is in the range of 0.1 nanometer. Uh, width of human hair is about a tenth of a millimeter. Okay, the smallest unit of an instrument that an instrument can measure is known as the precision. 
Okay, so what's the precision of a meter rule? It is one millimeter. You can see from our meter rule here. You can see it's actually one millimeter. Okay. So how do we avoid errors of measurement? We make sure there's no parallax error by positioning our eyes perpendicularly above the ruler. Okay, instead of at, this, at an angle. If you can see at an angle here, it actually doesn't read the exact measurement of 1, but it probably reads 0 0.9. Over here, instead of 2.9, we'll read 3 millimeters, 3 centimeters, sorry. Okay, just to introduce you to uh, two um, measuring instruments. My first measuring instrument will be the vernier calipers. Okay, just jump straight into the use of the vernier calipers. Okay, we actually got the uh, inside jaws to measure internal diameters and outside jaws to measure external diameters. As you can see, we've got a main scale here and a vernier scale. First step will basically be to read the main scale reading. So to zoom in on this part, okay, how you read the main scale is looking at the reading on the main scale just before the zero mark on the vernier scale. This is known as a vernier scale. So that reading is actually 3.1 centimeters. Okay, step number two, we actually look at which line is actually directly in line with the main scale, so the vernier's reading that is in line with the main scale will be 1, 2, 3, 4 over here. So 0 0.4 millimeters or 0 0.04 centimeters. Okay, so the final answer, just 3.1 plus 0 0.04, that gives us 3.14 centimeters. Okay, so for centimeters, it's two decimal places. Okay, to avoid errors in vernier calipers, we make sure there's no zero error. Zero error simply means that something stuck in between. So in other words, when you are, when the scale is at zero, in other words, when it's not supposed to measure anything, you see, seems like the vernier scale cannot go all the way back. So what you do is that you just find out how much is that amount that is stuck. So 0 0.03. Uh, centimeters you just add your final reading to that that's it okay uh, this one will be something got chipped off so what you do is that uh, oh sorry uh, the previous one you need to subtract it and this one you just need to add it in the end okay because even when it's zero it reads to be zero if this is directly in line with the main scale reading it's actually not zero it's more than that so you need to add an amount of 0 0.03 Okay. Second instrument I want to introduce you is the micrometer screw gauge. Micrometer screw gauge, you can see there are scales. This is the main scale reading here. Okay, I've got another video that I showed you how to read. You can see this is in millimeters. So what we do here is that when we measure one, the top one is one, two, three, four, five. The bottom will be 5.56, 6.57. 7.58 and the bottom will read 8.5. What unit is this? So first step, 8.5 meters, millimeters. You read on the main scale. After that, look at the timbre. This is the one at the side is known as a timbre reading that's in line with the main scale, datum line. That is 40, also known as 0 0.40. So what we do is that we just add both of them up. 8.5 plus 0 0.40, you get 8.90 millimeters okay same thing there's that zero error uh, there may be zero error in your uh, micrometer screw gauge okay so just highlight this commonly used instruments tape measure you can see a move tape measure and meter rule we've got precision of one millimeter vernier calipers 10 times that so 0 0.1 millimeter and micrometer 10 times of that, again, of the vernier calipers was 0.01 millimeter. That's very precise. Okay, so errors to take note of. All three of them have got parallax error. Only zero errors are for measuring instruments like the vernier calipers and the uh, micrometer screw cage. Okay, um, now we come to the last part of this chapter, which is time. Okay, SI unit for time is the second, like we all know. Okay, I've showed you also an 
<coughs> a pendulum. Uh, what is one complete oscillation? Basically, a complete oscillation just means that it needs to repeat itself. So, for example, if it starts from the left, it needs to go all the way to the right and back to the left again. This is known as one oscillation. Okay, so the period of a pendulum is a time taken for one complete oscillation. Okay. I also talked a bit about human reaction time error in my previous video. So do check that out on the pendulum. Okay, basically human reaction error is the time from I to C pendulum bob start moving to the brain processing this and sending a message to my finger to press the button on the stopwatch to the finger actually pressing the start button. So you see there's some time taken and that even though it's very short, <coughs> there's still a human error called a human reaction time error. Okay. So that's why we also need to take the time for not we can't just take for one oscillation, but we need to take for at least 10 or 20. So when we divide the measured time by 20, the inaccuracy of the period due to human reaction is actually a, will be a fraction of the human reaction time. Okay, hope that makes sense because the human reaction time will be the same amount whether I time it for one oscillation or 100 oscillations. But the thing is, if I were to time it for 100 oscillations, I'm actually dividing the error by 100 times. So the error becomes very small, which is why we take more oscillation readings to reduce the human reaction time error. Okay. Check out the video on the uh, pendulum because I actually did a uh, uh, live experiment on how we actually cut down the error. Okay, check that out. Okay, so just to recap, a pendulum of a, the period of a pendulum is the time taken for the pendulum ball to make one complete oscillation. All right, and that's it for this video. Okay, thanks for watching. Okay, uh, see you guys again.